It's time for more WWE hot takes, which will probably ruin my week. And let me know down in the comments your wrestling hot takes. It can be current day or in history, and you'll be in the next episode. Liv Morgan is a unique champion due to the fact she's an underdog cowardly heel in an era full of strong, dominant women's champions. Ooh, someone, someone, cooked. someone cooked here. I do kind of see the vision. My hot take is that while it's certainly not perfect, current NXT is better than black and gold NXT. Ooh. Ooh. Don't get me wrong, I love that era of NXT too, but current NXT is a great mix of fun characters, great wrestling action. Black and gold NXT was just full of wrestler from the indies whose gimmick is that he's really good at wrestling, and the takeover main events becoming kickout fests got old after the first few times they did that. Hmm, I mean, I think when you think of that prime NXT takeover crowd and it's it's electric like an Adam Cole versus a Johnny Gargano, for example, you can watch that infinite times and it's always gonna be lit. But with that being said, is the current era of NXT absolutely elite? Yes. I think this is going to be one of the greatest eras of NXT we've ever seen. DDJ peaked when he was hyping up AEW Fight Forever before it released. Okay. Listen, in my defense, I was trying to give those developers the benefit of the doubt. From what I was seeing, I was like, okay, I'm going to give this game a chance. I'm going to at least play it before I judge it. And then when it finally came out, it wasn't an Ice Spice ass level of game. It was a Rikishi level ass level of game. And that's not good ass. Randy Orton should break Ric Flair's championship streak. I, uh, disagree agree with that, although Randy Orton, you know, I, I wouldn't be mad at it because that man has been immaculate most of his career. And I mean, he's the Viper. You can't ever get mad at an RKO. You know, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I don't think it's gonna happen. IMO, Jey Uso shouldn't get involved back in the Bloodlines business. He spent all this time earning his spot in a singles division and bringing him back to working with Jimmy would feel like all the time has been wasted. Uh, I disagree. And I guess also Triple H disagrees with you as well because if you saw what happened on Raw, yeah. Jey Uso is no longer the Intercontinental Champion because Solo said, I got some tickets. He pulled out that SBR 2011 cutscene. He said, word to, word to DDJ's go. So let me tell you something right now. I know I've been slandering Solo a little bit recently. I take all that slander back. I think in the time that Jey Uso has spent on his own, when it's just him, Ooze, I think has only benefited him. And I think getting back involved in the bloodline business is only going to benefit him as well. So I disagree with that, but I see- We don't need both Money in the Bank and King slash Queen of the Ring every year since they both serve similar purposes. The WWE should run Money in the Bank one year and King of the Ring slash Queen of the Ring the next and keep it alternating. Uh, another one I disagree with, actually. I see what you mean, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, like, I'd agree with you if you would have said Money in the Bank should be at WrestleMania and King and Queen of the Ring should be like later in the year instead of how they did it this year. I think they were very close together. That much I do kind of agree with and that much I do kind of see, but in terms of alternating them year by year, I think Money in the Bank in general could probably do with a little break anyway. And so yeah, I kind of, I see half your vision. I see it. <laughs> Deontay needs to use some big time rush sound effects. Okay, no it. Gunther isn't the greatest IC champion of all time. The Miz is only because Gunther only has one reign. Uh, mm, uh, uh. Listen, uh, I love The Miz. I've talked about it at length before. I love The Miz. I think he still to this day does not get as much respect as he deserves. With that being said, Gunther held that title for a devil level reign. 666 days. One of the greatest IC title reigns of all time, if not the greatest. I know you're not saying it is, but I might say it is. Shawn Michaels is a better booker than Triple H. A low-key fact. Especially when it comes to the women's division. On Raw, they're doing these big multi-women tag matches like we're living in 2012. Just throwing everyone together. You got Natalia at the head of the pack, which I love with her little walk. You know, it's all love for Natalia, as you guys know. But with that being said, Lyra Valkyria should only be doing singles entrances. She, she shouldn't have to throw her entrance into uh, uh, the midst of other women. Like, seriously, Lyra Valkyria's entrance is El Fuego, okay? And you've got all these women coming out with her. She has to she has to stand off to the side doing the thing. No! <laughs> Meanwhile, down in NXT, Sean's actually booking the women like they matter. Like they like he cares about them. And I fuck with that, Sean. I love that. Like, I'm not even just just talking about someone like Delta or Julia or Stephanie Vakur, that is in of itself incredible. But I'm also talking about the way Sean has booked Roxanne Perez and Kalani Jordan and someone like Sol Ruka and even Lola Vice. Like, this guy. Generation. The way is one of the greatest factions of all time. They were entertaining and something special like that can never be replicated. I hear you actually. I hear you actually. The way, more like the way my voice just cracked. <laughs> 
But no, seriously, the way it was a great faction, and I genuinely wish, much like the Hurt Business, they got a bit more time on main roster to actually do their thing. WWE turned Money in the Bank into a joke, and it's one of the stupidest pay-per-view slash PLE concepts of all time. What? Wait a minute. Huh? What the hell? What? I'm just going to continue to get lower the more ridiculous this gets. Stupidest of all time. Huh? Of all time. What? Of all... Money in the what? bank? In the blue hell? Are you sit? What? what? Are you... Oh. I'm flabbed. I'm erred. I'm gasted. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I can't believe what I just read. This briefcase has given avenue to some of the greatest moments in wrestling history. And you said it's a stupid, one of the stupidest concepts of all time? No, your birth is one of the stupidest concepts of all time. My brain hurts. Sorry. If you hate Superman, there are plenty of videos that will show you why he is probably the greatest hero in fiction. No, he's not. He's lame moving. My on. hot take is that I feel like the belts need to be defended more. Like, like sometimes we got people who win the belts and go weeks slash months without defending it. Example, Finn and JD. Uh, yeah, I mean- I really only cared about this kind of example when Brock Lesnar was champion because that motherfucker barely defended that title, especially around 2015. And in those times when there was only one title, it was pretty frustrating. Like We had this pay-per-view right here and I think the main event was a number one contenders match on pay-per-view because Brock just wasn't there. That was stupid. So in that sense, yeah, belts should be defended more, but tag titles, eh. Whatever, you know. We need a R-Truth a title run. As in, you want him to become a wave? Run exclusive pay-per-views from 2002 to 2007 were peak and made each brand stand out more. I agree. Triple H fumbled the Hurt Business. The faction had so much potential, but it was squandered. Yes, it was. I agree. But at least in AEW, it seems like they're kind of picking up where they left off and it might actually have uh, one more run, which is going to be pretty entertaining to see. It already has been entertaining, but it's only going to get better, I Mustafa think. Mustafa Ali is a WWE champion. This is some god-level trolling, Lamau. What do you mean trolling? It in 2019, he legitimately could have become WWE Champion. If we're talking about that timeline I mentioned last time, it could have happened. I'm sorry, but it could have. That's not a Bronson joke. Bronson Reed will have a Mark Henry Hall of Pain run. I'd like to see that. I'd be down for that. Hot take, WWE 2K Battlegrounds wasn't that bad. It was a fun party game, although it wasn't as authentic as the other 2K games. I still think it was a pretty fun game. Here's the thing when it comes to WWE 2K Battlegrounds. In principle, it's not a bad game, but when you think about the, the, the events surrounding it, it's like, oh, 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 in this gap year where, hey, you're not getting a WWE 2K game this year, um, and there's a pandemic going on, here's this little party game, enjoy. A game that was never really going to last, and a game that really wasn't built to be a main game, you know, for the year. I understand, obviously, they were working on the new 2K, and we got 2K22 like a year and a half later. I understand the events around it, but it just, it shouldn't have been a main game. It should have been almost a game that accompanies a 2K Game. You know, like in a similar way in 2010, 2011, when we had SmackDown versus Raw 20. And it's what Battleground should have been. It was never built to last on its own. But is it a fun game? Sure. If you're blind, deaf, and dumb. Uh, anyway, I know they're iconic, but both WWF and WWE Scratch logos are actually kind of hideous from a graphic design standpoint. They look like poorly designed Halloween graphics. Oh my god. Okay, Mr. Graphic Designer. Damn, this brother came in here. He said, I'm a graphic designer. I got a degree in that stuff. And quite frankly, WWF, hot tour. I th that shit stinks. Oh, wow. I made the video. Thanks, lol. No, no problem. Wait for it. Black Chula. It took my breath away. <laughs> anyway, here are some more hot takes. I think the Mixed Match Challenge should return. It was super fun. I agree, big time. 2016 no, wow. SmackDown Live can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any era of SmackDown or Raw. Uh, absolutely agree. It was a generational time. The 24-7 title was great, and I wish it was still around, and it shouldn't be brand exclusive, and the champion defends it on any show. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, main event, whatever. Side note, Chelsea Green would have killed it as a champion. I Chelsea mean, Green would kill it in any role she's given because she's fucking talented as shit. And quite frankly, Triple H, if you haven't paid down for her to win the Women's Royal Rumble in January. You're fucking done! This one just says, I love your videos. Let me, let me give that one a love heart right there. I missed that one. My bad, my bad. Tommaso Ciampa is better off a solo act. Uh-oh. Pairing him up with Johnny Gargano again drags his character down and doesn't let him have the aura he deserves. Not a big fan of Gargano in general. Whoa. 
Oh, Gargano's got shooters out here. Yeah. Listen, let me tell you this. I can already kind of see what what uh, what the big man upstairs, what the big game is cooking. It's kind of obvious to me that he's he's doing. He's like almost rebooting the Johnny Gargano Tommaso Ciampa story for the main roster crowd. I guess it's gonna be one of those things where they tag team for a while and then you know there's like oh, they've already teased the dissension of Ciampa being like fucking hell. This Gargano guy is holding me back, and then one of them will turn on the other. Then they'll have these banger matches again. Then Ciampa will get super ripped again and then no one will survive, etc, etc. You get it. The Miz versus John Cena was a great rivalry. I agree with that but one. But also with that being said, I am kind of biased because that was like one of the first... I have to say this very quietly. Uh, that was one of the first... One of the first feuds I, I fully watched. So, um, yeah, sorry. And I also feel like as characters, both John Cena and The Miz kind of bounced off each other well. And when we look back at his career around that point, I think The Miz deserves an honorable mention as one of his greatest opponents of the PG era. Okay, moving on now, in case I get sniped again. The running around the ring for a spear is pretty dumb. You know, I don't agree with that. I kind of love when Braun charges up and he's like, doo, 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 like fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. He turns on the theme song, he's like, Hot take, they need to bring back the red and blue ropes. It makes the two brands feel different. I, I see your vision, but I don't really care that much. You know, I'll be honest. Halo won the Brooklyn Breakdown, but got robbed. I don't know what the hell the Brooklyn Breakdown is, but if it's in the name of defending my girl, Layla from Lay Cool, I agree with you. She was robbed. Now, what the hell's the Brooklyn Breakdown? We only need two night PLEs for SummerSlam and WrestleMania, but I am open to having a two night Royal Rumble. No, I think the Royal Rumble needs Because one. when you think about it, right, the Royal Rumble is kind of the perfect one to have two nights. You have the women's main event, Royal Rumble on one, and then the men's on the other. Like, that feels like a two night. It feels like it has to happen. 2016 SmackDown is the greatest wrestling show we have ever had. Oh my god. I'll be honest, I can't entirely disagree with you because, I mean, it was a great era. Oh, wait a minute. Someone in the comments said, this is not a hot take. This is just a shit take. Oh my god. My take is that Roman didn't need to beat Demon Finn and neither did Edge. They should have protected the character or just not used it. Yeah, I agree with that and one. And then to go ahead and have Edge beat Demon Finn a few months later in Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania, it's just like, what, you're just waiting wasted all that time of building up Demon Finn for many years, so I agree with that one, yeah. Demon Finn needs a revenge tour on a Liv Morgan level. Actually, what? fuck that for a second. He needs a double revenge tour. He needs to start writing people off Tony D'Angelo style. He needs to start whacking people. He needs to start whacking off. That is a sound bite. Call me sure one more time. My hot take is it is a big fucking deal. It's a big fucking deal. Big fucking deal. Becky Lynch is the greatest women's wrestler in WWE history. Honestly, I'm a stop reading there and agree with you. I don't even care what the rest says. I don't care. Becky Lynch is the greatest women's wrestler of all time and she's always going to be my favorite women's wrestler of all time. So you got me. I want Vince back. Might seem a little bit suspicious though. You watch. <sighs> there should be a men's bra and panty match in WWE at some point. You know what? Actually, you're right. And honestly, it should involve pretty deadly. I agree with my that My hot take is that Nikki Bella is a great wrestler. The Bellas deserve the Hall of Fame and tag titles. I agree with that one. Are you kidding me? My hot take is that Karrion Cross deserves deserves a US IC title push. You know what? I absolutely agree. He does deserve a push. I think he needs a promotion, quite frankly. To head of flipping Krabby Patties at the Krusty Krab. That, that brother should be flipping Krabby. 